So I'm Taylor Dixon. I co-founded the company and I'm primarily uh, work with the data processing and developing all of the software uh, to generate the one-click processor and all the data products that you see. And I'm Conrad Kern. Uh, I come to this with 35 plus years of remote sensing background. Uh, I'm also a retired Air Force Lieutenant Colonel and my job is many but mostly to apply this, this experience I have to uh, the current problems being uh, solved here. To begin with LiDAR, I think the uh, most critical piece is to understand that it is very similar to, some, to technology that has been existing for around 100 years now, radar. And that's kind of where part of the acronym comes from. A little LiDAR means either light radar or it means light detection and ranging depending on who you're asking. Uh, and so from our perspective, we really view LiDAR as a really complicated rod. And we've paired that with a receiver, a Trimble branded receiver, in order to make a new technology that is a fast rod and receiver pair. So it's pretty simple. What you have is a laser that sends out a beam of light and that bounces off of something. And the time it takes to bounce off something is measured by a sensor that sees the light. And since we know the speed of light, we then know what the distance is because distance is just velocity over time. And as a drone company, we've been able to take this rod and receiver pair and make it uh, fly so that way it can get above the canopy. It can you know, avoid all of the errors that you get underneath the canopy and also avoid any uh, obstruction of its operation. Most people are familiar with what I call an angle imaging system. This is how you perceive things with your eye. You can tell that he's over there and she's over there because you perceive this angular separation between these two. And this is how most cameras work, how our eyes work, etc. LiDAR is very different in that it's a ranging system. Ranging systems are able to detect very precisely how far something is away, which is not a capability of an angular system. You have to create that distance perception through other means. Uh, LiDAR is able to detect that range very precisely, which is why we're so good at doing topographic mapping to get that undulation of the Earth uh, into our uh, uh, data. So other mapping software is like photogrammetry use a RGB drum, uh, they put it up, they take a bunch of photos and gather a bunch of, uh, kind of imagery data. And then they try to process that using uh, photogrammetry to get uh, basically a 3D model of the space. The problem though is that if you have any sort of vegetation, it's not going to be able to see underneath that. And oftentimes throughout the scene, you need a lot of control points in order to shore up that model. With LiDAR, what we use is a ranging sensor and an active sensor, which means that you can, one, penetrate the light through that vegetation and get the uh, ground uh, back, and then also you tie it to your base station, so that way, the same way you're going around with your rod and receiver taking points, we're doing the same thing, so you don't need a lot of control points in the scene. finished process, we give you three files. We give you what we call every tree, branch, and leaf, which has everything in the scene that you've collected. We give you the one foot rasterized ground points, which we've taken out all of the vegetation. We've rasterized it to one foot, which allows for basically the highest density of topography that you can generate. And then we give you a subsample based off of your selection so that you can easier import it into different softwares like Civil 3D or Carlson, or you know, if you have older softwares that use utilizing your workflow, that handles a 25 foot grid that you'd normally collect. Yeah, it's real easy with LiDAR because we are pumping out hundreds of thousands of pulses to overcome the uh, the, the uh, processors. I mean, it's simply too much data. But 
the law of averages saves you here and gives you a, a much better uh, look at what the ground is. I think it's going to be important that there's a number of pieces that for us, for you, will be underneath the hood that might help explain how this goes. I think the first slide we'd like to show you is a point cloud that includes everything. And we've colored this by height. Remember that LIDAR, because it's a ranging system, has no color inherent in itself. So we've imposed a pseudo color on it. And as you can see in the scene, you're seeing all the trees, all the outbuildings, all the outcroppings. Uh, generally, we can see anything that rises above the, the terrain by a couple inches. And then we take all of that scene and we filter out the vegetation. And so this is what it looks like with the one rasterized grid, to where now you can see just the topographies. You can see how the earth is changing as compared to how the trees that overlay the earth are. Now, I think it's important to go back to the RGB image in that, the, which we show here, the RGB image cannot penetrate or see between those trees. And so you'll see a tree covered area. And I think this one is a very important uh, example in that the tree cover actually hides a 14 foot deep ravine, mm -hmm. which of course you, you will see in the LIDAR data, which we show next. And then, so going back to the one foot, we can see that, that deep ravine through the middle of this. Uh, and the last piece for easier importing into your software, we subsample it 20, to the 25 foot to where you can still get the detail and you can still generate your one foots, but you're, it'll work more to what type of workflow that you operate with. So today uh, we are primarily targeting a surveyor who does a lot of one foot topography mapping. LIDAR though has many other uses. The Army Corps of Engineers uh, has dedicated uh, plane-based assets that will overfly any area that has had a major national disaster, such as uh, the seemingly frequent uh, storms that rack the, the southern coast of Louisiana. They will go through and image those to look at erosion, building destruction, have the roads uh, experience any defects that would draw attention, immediate attention, to reconstruction efforts. On top of that, we've worked a lot with earth movers, who their entire job is based off of how much dirt is actually there and uh, quoting how much actually needs to be moved. And so this is really good in those type of environments where you have a lot of detailed earth and we want more vol detailed volumetrics than, say, a guy walking around and taking the top, the edges, and just building out a couple of brake lines. We, we found that using this volumetric assessment as opposed to traditional either eyeball assessments or uh, a, a rod assessment with a GPS, we can be uh, 20 to 50 percent more precise in our measurements. And, and that's money. That's money to the, the contractors having to move dirt. Yep. Ultimately, the technology is extremely powerful because it's powered by proven technology of GPS and positioning systems and enhanced by a new way of taking light detection from the sky and applying it to pre-existing technologies. So let me say thank you for your gracious attention. I hope this has been informative and uh, we look forward to uh, hearing more from you.